time, I would like to call to order the meeting of the Hardin County Board of Education. And if you all don't mind, we'll stand and say the place to play. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, at this time, I'd like to have a moment of silence for Pam Shapiro. Uh, she was one of our retired employees and, and was back working with us again as temporary, I think. As uh, our homebound, one of our homebound instructors, yes. Okay, so we'll have a moment of silence. Uh, Pam was passed away last week or week before last there. Thank you. Uh, board commitments. Don, you want to get those? I've got them. Hardin County Schools board team commitments. I'm sorry, don't know why I just read that. To improve our effectiveness, the Hardin County Schools board team commits to keep children first, listen, be prepared, be professional, demonstrate financial stewardship, represent the entire district and support district goals, and support board decisions. Okay, thank you. And, uh, Recognitions tonight we are going to skip because we didn't have school today. So, uh, and also uh, we don't have anything on focus on academics. Or we do. We do. Yes, we do. We do. Go for it, <laughs> Mr. Greg Sutton. Yes, sir. Uh, we were supposed to have some STLP uh, groups here tonight presenting their projects. A lot of them qualified for the state, but with the fact of school cancellation, we asked them to be safe and not uh, get out this afternoon. So we're going to present that next month. But well, we still have Kristen Swords here with us tonight. I don't know if y'all met Kristen yet. Kristen's our new middle school director of curriculum instruction assessment. Uh, we pulled her in here. She was assistant principal at West Harvard Middle School. Does a great job. She's developing great relationships with our middle schools and our staff. Uh, greatly appreciate her. I don't, I don't think she's presented, but one of the tasks that we ask her to do is the comprehensive district improvement plan. And that's, that's very important. That kind of drives what we do from a school improvement perspective and goal setting and strategic decision making. We talk about closing that achievement gap. The work that we put on paper drives a lot of things that we do at the school. So I don't want to take her thunder here tonight. First time you got a chance to meet Miss Kristen, so she's doing a great job for us. So Kristen, come on up. Turn it over to you. Thank you, Greg. Good evening. Uh, before I start, I just want to, in honor of School Board Recognition Month, thank you all for your service and dedication to our district. I know that the time that you put in is greatly appreciated. So uh, I'm honored to be here to talk to you about our comprehensive improvement planning process. This is a process that starts in August and we finish our improvement plan around December, but really the process does not end then. It's an ongoing process where we continue to look at progress monitoring and data as it comes in and we look at whether we're making growth towards our goals and where our success lies. And so our leaders through this process focus on priority needs that we establish. We look at our funding at both the district and the school level and whether that is meeting those needs. And we also ultimately look at closing achievement gaps for students. So with that, we have four phases in the improvement planning process. And you have a handout in your packet there that just kind of outlines each of those phases. And I'm gonna touch on them briefly. The four phases each have diagnostics that help us dig into the data that's given to us and look at the needs that we have as a district and at each school level as well. Our CSIPs and CDIPs are developed as three to five year plans and this plan that was presented to you is no different from that. There is a, there's been a little bit of a struggle though uh, or an interruption in state assessment data and accountability reporting. And so that affects the goals that we establish within our CDIP and that each school will establish for their CSIP. So KDE gave us some guidance this year and they talked to us about um, our options for creating goals. 
And one of those options was to continue with the goals that we had established from our last reliable set of state assessment data. And that was the 1819 school year. And so we looked at the goals that we had established um, during that time frame. We looked at our percentages of students performing proficient and distinguished in certain areas, and we felt that it was best to continue with those goals because that was reliable data that we had at that point. And so our goals have remained the same from the 1819 school year, but we've gone in and realigned our strategies and activities to fit what we are doing this school year, 21-22 to impact student growth. So phase one is uh, where I met with the principals. We talked about a timeline for this process and then we all committed to the process. Phase two is where we really got into our work and we looked at a needs assessment in phase two. And with that, KDE um, this year came out with a key elements template and that's also included in your packet of information. The key elements template helped us look at the six key core work processes. And these are processes that go on in districts and schools every day. <coughs> They're things like designing instruction, delivering instruction, assessment, support that we provide for students, and then the culture within our district and within each school building. And so we met, we had a working session with school leaders, principals, assistant principals, district leaders, and we talked about these six key core work processes and we came up with evidence to support how we are doing each of those work processes at the district level and at the school level. So the sheet that you have there are the things that we're doing at the district level to meet those work processes. And the goal behind that was that it would help us with our needs assessment because we would take that information and we would look for any gaps that may exist. And then our strategies and activities would align to meet those gaps. We also spent time in phase two talking about our strengths. And typically that conversation would be guided around the state assessment data from the previous year and what strengths we were noticing. But because of that limited state assessment data, and a lot of it being suppressed data that could not be released, we looked at strengths that were current um, and relevant to us at that time. So around the time that we were working on our needs assessment, it was September, and we had just finished our first round of iReady diagnostic testing, and we looked at the strengths that we were seeing in our students at that time, and we felt that that provided a current picture for us of where our students were and so a lot of the strengths that you see mentioned in the needs assessment of the CSIP and CDIP are about the iReady results that we experienced. We also talked about the school environment. We felt that that was a strength. We were able to return to in-person instruction this year, um, both A and B groups, and we have um, incorporated lots of social emotional lessons for our schools and for our students, and so we included that as a strength this year as well. And then that led the framework for phase three, which is where the majority of the work is done, and that is in the actual improvement plan. And so each school creates their improvement plan, and then us as a district will create the district improvement plan. And that is based around six indicators. <clears throat> Those indicators are proficiency, um, sorry, proficiency, separate academic indicator, growth, achievement gap, transition or post-secondary readiness and graduation rate. And that's determined based on the format of the state assessment. So we can anticipate that the CSIPs and CDIPs will probably look different next year as we're moving on to KSA and KDE is deciding what the accountability will look like with that new assessment and what the reporting will look like. So we may not see these six indicators next year. But for this year, they wanted our goals to address those six indicators. And so that's what we carried forward with the 1819 goals that we had created. And so we look at okay. um, the strategies and initiatives that we're doing this year to address those six goals. And we've added things uh, based on ESSER funds and new initiatives that we have as a district to account for those gaps that we see. Um, we've added intervention or support staff, enrichment teachers at the middle school level, the MyPath individualized instruction and the diagnostic uh, iReady report itself and the data that it gives us. So those are new strategies and activities that will help give us the data that we need to see if we're meeting those goals that we had established. And then that leads us to phase four, which is where we're currently at. 
and that is the ongoing progress monitoring, us continuing to look as a district and individual schools at where we're at on meeting those goals and uh, what we're going to do to continue student growth. And so we're already in our second iReady diagnostic window. We're getting results from that right now, even though it's uh, not complete until February 5th, but we're seeing great things. We're seeing schools that have upwards of 100% progress towards their annual typical growth for students. And so that's very promising to see that information. And as we finish the second diagnostic window, we will then take that information, come back and look at our CSIP and CDIP and talk about where we feel we are in meeting the goals that we have set forth. So as you can tell, it's a very um, collaborative process. We've worked a lot with the principals and assistant principals at the school level to develop this plan. It is definitely a tool that we want to use to guide teaching and learning so we can continue to see imp uh, improvement in student growth and success. And I'm free and willing to answer any questions if you have anything specific about the CDIP, our goals, or the process itself. Very good. I just yeah. want to thank Kristen. Uh, I know that we have several principals here tonight, but she offered workshops that were at different times so our principals could come in and receive assistance. It's not an easy program. They call it E-Proof. That E does not stand for easy. Uh, <laughs> it is a very difficult program, so I know they appreciate the help and throughout that process, and thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. I see why she's doing such a great job. Uh, glad to have her on our instructional service department team. I want somebody to correct me if I say something wrong here. I, I'm thinking from August to December. From August to December, I'm not sure we had a break in instruction this year, or did we? we did I'm not, not sure we missed any days for uh, weather related or COVID. And I and when I show you the data next month, hopefully at the at least a noon board meeting, the growth that we're seeing, as she mentioned on the already diagnostic from fall to winter, what our principals and teachers have been able to do with no break in instruction has been unbelievable the amount of students that tested two grade levels below that have moved either one grade level or on grade level has been tremendous and it shows the impact the teachers have by having these students in the classroom so thank you board of education miss morgan for allowing us as an instructional service department to be out there and the teachers principals to get the job done with the kids i know we have a rough patch here that's that's whether it is what it is but thank you all for helping us make that happen and can't wait to share the results after we're done on february the 5th so thank you all thank you thank you thank you greg I know it's uh, been quite a challenge this year because you know, a lot of people out with COVID and uh, I think the female principals way outnumber the men principals here tonight, don't they? <laughs> but uh, we don't even have one here, do we? <laughs> but thank you all for coming. I appreciate Greg and, Greg and John are standing in for them. Oh, are they standing in for them? <laughs> no, I won't count those. That's not fair. But we do appreciate y'all coming out, and you know, it, the board meetings is something that uh, you don't have to attend, but we appreciate you being here. Thank you. Okay, and that's uh, number six is recognition of visitors, and uh, we have uh, three people that signed up here to speak tonight, I believe. Richard Ceres? Searcy. Searcy, okay. Uh, Come on up. Wasn't sure where to go with the way you've got your name spelled there, so. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Ceresi is from West Point Schools, and yes. uh, we've been uh, talking with him a little bit about some, uh, sharing some school space with him, so here he is. Uh, yes, I'm Richard Ceresi. Uh, I'm representing the, I'm, I currently sit on the West Point City Council and here representing them and the citizens of West Point. Uh, to encourage you, we have uh, uh, made a proposal to the Hardin County Board of Education for the city of West Point to lease the existing and abandoned old West Point school <coughs> building that's empty now. Um, we tried to propose a lease that was equitable both to the city and to Hardin County Board of Education as the building is now just uh, sitting there using utilities and not being used for any particular purpose. The school, ever since the school is closed, the school was one of the anchors in our little town. Uh, and since it's closed, we, we, for one, we need another community center. We need some place for citizens to gather. The school was particularly important because it, it truly was where, where the past met the future. There were a lot of people who 
went to school there, that ended up teaching there or working there. It was just a great community space. Since it's been empty, it's kind of, it's taken away a lot of community space, a lot of community organizations that use it for meetings. So at this point, we have a lot of good uses for the building. Um, currently, we have no ADA uh, accessible meeting space in West Point that would suffice. The big thing is, is with the recent tornadoes we have, we have no shelter space, which the school could provide uh, tornado shelters for, for the citizens. We have a closed closet. We don't have any place to put it. Uh, uh, the, all of our city facilities, our city hall, uh, and our museum are all below base flood and moving those facilities to the school uh, would get them not completely out of the flood plain, but it much, much higher. So there's lots of, uh, <coughs> lots of opportunities there. We're, we hope to use the, the building for adult education, which we would share for, with Hardin County Schools. Um, we, we intend to use it for tutoring the, the West Point students that are going to school here in Hardin County and still need some help. <coughs> And the list of other uses for it is just it goes on and on. We have many local res residents that are willing to teach class. Uh, we have welding class. We're, we'll be able to teach the trades, um, homemaking, all those types of things. We have currently West Point is the, the, the conjunction of three of the historic trails, John Muir Trail, the, the uh, uh, Lewis and Clark, and Sam Pierman. All of those are becoming national trails. Uh, Lewis, the Lewis and Clark Trust has approached us, should we be awarded this uh, building, that they would perhaps want to put an uh, educational center in it about the Lewis and Clark expedition. Uh, the Ohio River Recreational Trails, they, that ends in West Point, they've expressed interest. So we have a lot of opportunities to put educational facilities into a building that is currently being unused, while we lessen the burden of maintenance and occupying it and taking care of it, we take that away, some of that away from Hardin County. The proposal is to go over three years where uh, Hardin County would contribute less and less to the utility bill primarily in insurance. Um, and we hope at the end of three years that we can not only be using it successfully for education and for our city facilities and our, our museum, but that we can also use it in, in an entrepreneurial spirit to be able to incubate new businesses, to be able to help existing <coughs> business expand, and use it as not only an educational center, but an economic development center. I could go on for days, but I'm sure you <laughs> <laughs> We, uh... We, we appreciate you uh, coming and telling the, basically you're telling the public here because our noon working session, you were there, and uh, but uh, we, uh, we're, we're interested in leasing with you all. Uh, we have a few uh, fine details that uh, I told you we probably would make a decision tonight and there's a few details in the contract that we want to get checked out and work into that we haven't got a total commitment on. It will you know, be agreeable with you all and us, but uh, there's, there's just a few things on some insurance and some things that we want to check on. But I am very much interested in working with you all and uh, seeing if we can't get this facility in your all's best use. and. Uh, Mm -hmm. Ours too. Uh, well, we we really want a partnership with the yeah. with, with the Hardin County Public Schools because I think that's that's the synergy we need. And, and again, as I said earlier, you know we're way up in the northern part of the county, and some people don't even realize we're part of the county. <laughs> so uh, maybe if we have a facility there, particularly with the adult education or crafts education or something that would draw other people from around the county, maybe we can. We can get over this little schism that we have about being the only part of Hardin County right. that touches the Ohio River. I think uh, Carl would be a, a great person to be a lease or a tenant, however you'd want to put it. 
you know, we, we need someone there to protect the building for one thing. If you don't, they get to be uh, vandalized. Uh, graffiti just cutting paint. the grass is a big deal. So. Graffiti, <laughs> yes. grass, yeah. So yeah. Uh, we are, uh, I would say, uh, definitely into the next board meeting, we'll have all these things worked out. We'll have uh, uh, John and uh, Superintendent Morgan to work on getting everything finalized we just got a few more details we want to put in some things and uh, uh, we, we understand have possibly had some other people that have inquired about it you know but uh, it's one of those things we're we're, we're working through it all right sir I thank right. you so much for your time thank and uh, if there's anything I can do to help please let me know we'll be in touch thank you thank, thank you thank you appreciate it uh, Hey, Kerry was next. Do you mind if Mr. Ash comes up? He's with West Point also, and we'll uh, take care of them. Thank you. I really have nothing to add other than what Councilman Cerisi said. Okay. Uh, Chairman Wise, and uh, how you doing, Judge Bland? <laughs> Haven't seen you in years. And uh, but uh, you know, any consideration that we can that, that, that we can have, uh, it is a a. Uh, a fine facility that's going to, we all know if it sits there, it's going to go down. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is a fine facility right now, and we can use it. And uh, if we can partner with you all some way, it's going to benefit you all and benefit us and uh, not scrap us too much for for cash. We, we would uh, greatly appreciate it. And uh, I hope you're not as hard to deal with as you was when I used to have to deal with you as oh, fire chief for fish. I'm tough. <laughs> <laughs> you, you taught me everything I know. So. <laughs> yeah, we, we do. We nice, preach. Nice to see you all again. And, uh, just as soon as you can uh, you know, make a decision on that, uh, we greatly appreciate it. All right. We'll, awesome. we'll, we'll work on it. And, uh, right. Thank you. We'll, we'll come Thank up you. with something good Thank for both you. of us. Okay, hey, Kerry wants to speak to us there. I just wanted to say, I didn't write anything out, I just, I'm here tonight and I wanted to let you guys know that last week, you know, obviously there's been lots of talk about going to NTI and the kids, you know, not sure what we're going to do, the numbers, you know, are very high, and um, I had a kid at Beta, and so the call to go um, to NTI, well, last week, you know, she was gone, got home at the weekend, and she just told me, she's like, well, mom, We'll be out for six weeks. Like, you know, we're going to be out. This is, this is the way it's going. Just, I don't know if she was trying to encourage me <laughs> or what the situation. But um, I, I encouraged her and I, you know, told her that, no, absolutely not. It's not going to be six weeks, kiddo. Like, hang in there. We're going back to school. And so I just wanted to come up here and say thank you. Um, when the call came back that you guys were going to do in-person um, instruction, I, we were so excited and so happy. And I just, I know those are hard calls and hard decisions. I know you guys have criticisms on both sides. You have hopefully positive things on both sides of people who want it and people who don't. Um, I just wanted to say from a kid in eighth grade who told me we were solid six weeks out, just start making a new, you know, desk for her, that she was very excited. We were very excited and I'm very appreciative um, when you guys make these hard calls. And I think, you know, data shows that the kids being in school in person with teachers is the best place for them and um, you guys are making those decisions and um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. We, uh, we also, we know for a fact in school is the best place for them and it's probably the safest place right now but uh, it has been tough. Our staff has worked hard. Uh, we've been short. We've had 40, 50 subs at Yep. in here and, and we don't have enough subs uh, I think uh, central office personnel has gone and taught classes they've done everything possible yes, they have. and uh, it's just a tough situation I think one day we had 255 out I believe you sent me uh, uh, that was total classified everyone right. uh, all, um, all employees and students yes it, that's a lot well uh, to, that was employees, mm -hmm. uh, but you got to take transportation, all those. 
Um, but I do want to just give a shout out. So Mike Lawson and I at 545 in the morning, we start looking at list of who's not there and which schools are short. And um, when we don't have teachers, we have teachers during their planning going in and covering classes. But we also have people from central office. Um, I text and say, can you show up here today? And what meetings can you cancel and go? So the people here at central office, I think, um, have all been out to the schools to assist, and we greatly appreciate that. So our goal is definitely to keep the schools open. Uh, sometimes it is uh, not possible. The General Assembly, I believe, will pass to where we can close individual schools and that not count toward our 10 days. Um, we have closed individual classrooms because of uh, outbreak in that classroom, but tried not to close the entire school. So there are steps we are definitely taking, and it, it's everybody's working together to make that happen. So uh, Mr. <coughs> Sutton got to teach math one day. Mr. Uh, Stiff got to teach science one day. Uh, <laughs> I got to teach seventh around. grade <laughs> algebra one day. <laughs> I don't know that teaching that is the scary. right term I should use, uh, trying to recall what I learned 30 years ago, 40, 50 years ago, <laughs> uh, a long time ago. Uh, the kids did a great job of instructing me. <laughs> Good. Good. But we do, we, we appreciate it. And I'm not going to use the government, governor's statement that we will get the rest of that. Y'all probably know. And I have seen so many shots on TV this year. I am the biggest wimp in this room taking a shot. And I am tired of seeing those shots on TV. <laughs> so. Y'all help me if you can. Send a word to tell them to take that off the news. Yeah. All right. Thank you all. Construction updates. Uh, we heard from the superintendent on the Central Harden job today. Uh, uh, on schedule. Weather has uh, been a little bit of problem, but they're still on schedule. So uh, we know that... Uh, Central Harden students are totally disrupted from their normal drive to school and uh, drop off procedure, but uh, they told us it would be about another year before we start to see any change on the parking lot. So we're looking forward to that uh, next time, this time next year, maybe they'll start to have some parking places back, but it is a good sized project. They're working on it. Uh, have encountered a few of the unknown things that you run into when you do a renovation project. So uh, they're on schedule as of right now, and that's our goal to keep them on schedule. We don't want another uh, project to turn out as long as East Harden did, so hopefully they'll get through it. John, you got anything else or anything you'd like to say on that? Thank you, God. <laughs> All right, uh, and that's. Uh, the architects wasn't there today, but not a whole lot he could have told us, I don't think, anyway, except showed us a picture of uh, some snow or water being on some footers out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're down to uh, consideration of the consent agenda. And uh, it was, uh, we're, we've got the approval of our comprehensive district improvement plan that we're approving tonight. And uh, we're going to approve a revised start time for GC Burkhead uh, beginning January the 24th. And they're going to add five minutes to their classroom instruction day. Uh, and I was, I learned a little out of it this morning too. Uh, by getting the five minutes, that's equal to all of our other schools. And by the end of the year, we'll gain one more day of. Uh, uh, Banked. Bank time, right. Yes. I'll draw a blank there. And so uh, I don't think the five minutes will be too bad. The reason that school was behind five minutes was due to some uh, student drop off and uh, buses being able to get in and out. And then that had created to where they started five minutes later. But we're going to bump them back up. So. The ones that drop students off will have to get there five minutes earlier now, and yes. we'll try to have all the schools be on the same schedule. And we're approving uh, John Harden uh, 
deck of students to go to Alabama. All of these are private carriers uh, for cost efficiency. Uh, seniors of Central Harden to travel to Ohio in uh, May. Approval of Bluegrass Middle School 8th grade history club to go to Washington, D.C. And approval of the Central Harden JROTC to travel to Dayton, Ohio. And then uh, we received the monthly financial reports, orders of the treasurer, activity fund balance. Uh, we're approving the draft budget for 2023. And uh, as of right now, we've got about a 2% inflation uh, plugged into that, so we don't know where that's going. It seems like every day something is higher and higher, so we're hoping that it won't exceed that 2%. And uh, we're proving the 2021 audit report. Brian Woosley was there with us today. Everything looked good on it, and uh, he had uh, had some little health issues. Normally we do this last part of the year, but it's got pushed back to January this year, so we are going to approve it. We had a good audit report. And uh, we're approving the SFCC offer assistance for construction to Arden County Schools and uh, some statewide uh, fundraisers. So, anyone have anything they want to talk about more, pull out of that, or take away, or? If not, we need a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And, uh, Action items. <laughs> Election of a board chair. That sounds like a good job for somebody. <laughs> a new person. I see. Well, let me jump right in there then, Charlie, because what I like to say is I want to move to elect uh, Charlie Wise for the 2022 board chair. I, th I thought this was supposed to be a rotating job. I never heard that. Is that a motion, Ben? That was a motion. <laughs> I'll second that motion. <laughs> Don, I thought you yes, were supposed Charlie. to take this job. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. You got a plan for her? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she well, wants it for another year. Any other nominations? <laughs> I think I get railroaded in this again. <laughs> I think you have to do a roll call. <laughs> do I have to do a roll call? Yeah, it's a roll call. <laughs> this has to be a roll call, don't it? Maybe I'll get some help here. Voting, Mr. Siegel. Aye. Ms. Barnes. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Aye. Guess I might as well vote out because I'm out of it. <laughs> uh, thank you all a bunch. Uh, I'll uh, try to keep peace here for another year. And, uh, what was the next item? Y'all didn't cause me to get off. Well, you know, that went, <laughs> so, that went so well yeah. that I'd like to move to elect <laughs> Don Johnson as uh, for the 2022 board vice chair. And I'll second that motion. I'd like to continue the whole leadership here. So, I think uh, y'all are just trying to get a free ride here, you know. <laughs> as long as we can, Charlie. All right. Any other nominations? If not voting. Mr. Bland. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. <laughs> Chair votes aye. Ms. Barnes. Aye. Mr. Siegel. Aye. All right. Now we got to uh, affirmation of the 2022 Board Secretary Treasurer. 
I move to affirm Superintendent Teresa Morgan as the 2022 Board Secretary and Treasurer. I'll second that. All right. All in favor, second five saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. And we also need the affirmation of a 2022 District Finance Corporation Chair. I'll I'll move to affirm the Hardin County School Board Chair Charlie Wise as the Chair and Superintendent Teresa Morgan as the Secretary Treasurer for the Hardin County School District Finance Corporation. I'll second that. All right. Any other nominations? Not. All in favor, saying five, saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. You want to trouble someone? Yeah. Meeting dates, times, and locations. Uh, Do we have a suggested slate of locations? Uh, Casey has the selection of locations. Yeah. Of course, the normal board meeting would be here except for the one that we have at the pack in. Mm -hmm. We're going to have that next month in February. February, yeah, February yeah. for uh, so. So we'll start in February. Uh, it's been Wednesday for the last 15 years. Uh, Thursday. Or Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> we could do it on Wednesday. Just change things, good. <laughs> but no, I, you know, y'all, would you rather have a different date, or does that work? I mean, it's fine for me. Or, I'm pretty flexible on any of them. But. I just soon leave it where it is. I think we, what we, we're doing is working. Yeah. Okay. We tried to work it another way last year, and it was difficult and didn't work. So. Well, we could do like some of, them, some of the other organizations. They say, you know, if you have one like at 10 o'clock in the morning or 1 o'clock in the afternoon or something, all the working people don't have a chance to come. Yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. You don't? <laughs> I don't either. I, I think it should be where people has a chance to get here, but really. Uh, uh, so, someone wants to make a motion to leave it uh, on Thursdays uh, here at the board office and then uh, at the various schools that we've got listed somewhere. Uh, How about so moved? In second. Okay. Have a motion and a second. Uh, I think most of you all are probably familiar that we, the noon meeting that we have has really been helpful. We get to go, or we go to a, most of the time, a different school. And it takes two years just for us to make that cycle to get to the schools. But a new board member that hadn't maybe been to all of them or any of them sometimes uh, you know they go to the school it's local in their community and they never get to see uh, Creekside or uh, one of the northern schools depending on where you're from so it really it helps and we get to tour the schools we get to look at them see what's going on and uh, uh, it just I think it's been a good thing uh, if we've got discussion, we're not trying to get around anything that's on that agenda. And, and, but sometimes we get into some numbers and things that would take, we were there about two and a half hours today. Yes. Uh, and we thought it would be a short one. Yeah, we did. And, and that's, you know, that's two and a half hours that's spent uh, crunching some numbers. Uh, we get to talking about budgets and things. We're not hiding anything in that budget. It's out there for public to view. But it gives us an opportunity to think about and uh, question some of the parts of it. And it's just all kinds of little things like that that we talk about. So normally uh, we do not take any action at the noon meetings uh, because that we feel like that it's our responsibility to be here. Uh, so people that is off from work or here of a night has the opportunity to hear us vote on it. And that's, uh, it's more of, a, more of a tour than anything, but it's also a good working session for us. So it, it's worked well and I think we're gonna continue as long as we're able to make it there. 
Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion on? Yes, sir. All in favor, second five is saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And new business. You want to have any new business they need to uh, bring up? Superintendent's report. Yes. So, uh, as Ms. Swords uh, graciously uh, mentioned earlier, this is School Board Appreciation Month. Um, and I will tell you, in Hardin County, we are truly blessed to have our four, five board members. I had it at six earlier tonight. Uh, five board members with all different talents and experiences that they bring to the board. Uh, what you need to realize is that while you're seeing this meeting that lasts an hour maybe on TV or a half hour on TV, is that they spend a lot of their personal time uh, talking with people, responding to emails, coming to meetings, uh, coming to construction meetings. So there is much more that happens behind the scenes, uh, but they are heavily invested in what happens in this community. And when they make decisions, they want to make sure not only is it in the best interest of the students in our district and holding us accountable as a district to make decisions and take action that is in the best interest of students, but also for the community. Um, they each recognize that they're elected and uh, they take that very seriously. Uh, you know, what is best for the community of Hardin County, uh, Vine Grove, uh, Cecilia Valley, all those different places, or Cecilia, not Cecilia Valley, uh, all those different places. So when you see them, please give them a huge thank you for their time and dedication. Uh, often we don't have a lot of people running for the board uh, because it is such a difficult position trying to make the right decision. And you have to come to an understanding at some point that not everyone is going to be happy with those decisions. But when you can fall back, it's all, always in the best interest of students. You can sleep well at night, and each of these board members does that. So just on the behalf, we have a gift for you. Um, if Greg, and they're not your alls. Uh, Greg and John would bring those up. That would be great. Uh, not that. That's Greg. Sorry. <laughs> I brought that in there for y'all to snack on it. Thank you. So we want to thank Heartland for being our host today uh, at our noon board meeting. And, thank you. Uh, they had some students who made some cards, and so we just really appreciate uh, you all and the talents that you bring to the table. So thank you. That concludes my All right. <laughs> Thank you all, and, and I would like to say I'm the, I'm the old one here. I've been here, uh, this is going on my 16th year, and uh, everything that I have tried to do is the right thing. Uh, I know some of y'all probably feel like that we have been challenging. Uh, we've been invited to some of your all's meetings at here, and I have tried to stay in a neutral position on that. Uh, I want to do what's right. Uh, sometimes those decisions are hard, but uh, in the end, whether you like it or I like it, I still would like to be your all's friends. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think that's important that we stay and work together. So uh, we'll, we'll continue to try to do that, and we're, we're, we're going to get it right. We've got <laughs> as good a board as, as I have ever dealt with. I've sat on the hospital board. I've been on some pretty important boards. And this group is good. We're good. So we're going to continue to try to make things right for y'all next year. And you help us, and we'll even make them better. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Executive session. We don't no, need sir. an executive session tonight. Good. Good. <laughs> don't feel executive at the moment. All right. So, uh, I guess uh, February the 17th is going to be the next uh, board meeting, and uh, all we need is a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Can we